Now, for the longest time, gaming on a Mac was kind of considered a joke with a super limited game library as well as very poor optimization tools for actually porting over PC games to the Mac. It was very much a dark place for Mac users that actually want a game. But until recently where Apple has launched their new Metal 3 API, where we can use translation tools such as Crossover that take DirectX 11 and 12 PC games and make them run on OS 10 natively without having to use any kind of virtual machines. So we're actually gonna be taking a look at the performance capabilities of the new Mac mini powered by the M4 chip, as well as a Mac mini powered by the M4 Pro chip. So we're gonna be comparing those two machines in terms of their gaming capabilities in both native Mac OS X games and games using crossover. So we're going to be pretty much playing some of my favorite Steam games that are available on the PC. Now, firstly, I just want to go over the configuration of our two Mac minis. Now, the cheapest option is the M4 chip, which comes with the 10 core CPU, 10 core GPU, 16 gigabytes of RAM, and 256 gigabytes of SSD storage for $599. The other one is the M4 Pro version of the Mac Mini, which is at the upper end of what you can configure the Mac Mini for, which has a 12 core CPU, a 16 core GPU, 24 gigabytes of RAM, as well as 512 gigabytes of SSD storage, but it costs more than double the price at $1399. Now, externally, both Mac Minis look identical. They have the same ports and connectivity options with two USB-C connections as well as a headphone jack at the front. And at the back, you have three Thunderbolt 5 connections, a full-size HDMI, as well as a gigabit Ethernet connection. Now, just before we get into the actual gaming results, I want to go over through some synthetic benchmarks to get a baseline feel of how fast an M4 chip is compared to an M4 Pro chip. So firstly, let's take a look at our Geekbench results, which is CPU specific. So in our multi-core performance, we got about 20,000 points on the M4 Pro and single core performance is about 3,600 versus on the M4, we're getting about 15,000 points on multi-core and 3,800 points on the single core. So much more performance on the multi-core, but very similar processing capabilities on the single core. Moving over to Cinebench, which is also a CPU benchmark, we're getting around 1,400 multi-core and 173 single core on the M4 Pro chip. And on the standard M4, we're getting Getting, uh, just under a thousand points, 973 on the multi core and 174 on the single core. Moving forward and taking a look at our GPU using Geekbench Metal, we're getting about 100,000 points on the M4 Pro and about 57,000 points on the standard M4. That's about 1.7 times the performance on the M4 Pro chip thanks to the 16 cores of uh, GPU performance compared to the 10 cores that we have on the M4. But I'm going to be curious to see if this will actually translate into real world gaming performance in terms of more FPS, more consistent frame rates in both uh, native and uh, games running crossover. So we'll definitely take a look at that. But I also want to do a, another GPU benchmark using a Unigen's Valley benchmark, high resolution 4K ultra detail settings. The M4 Pro chip is getting about 37 average frames per second versus 21 average frames per second on the M4. Moving forward, the M4 Pro chip also comes with a faster SSD, not only in terms of capacity of 512 versus 256, but a much greater success sequential read and write speeds, almost twice the amount. As you can see, using amorphous disk mark, we're getting about 58 and 4,400 points of read and write sequential speeds respectively on the M4 Pro versus about 3,000 and 2,000 read and write respectively on the standard M4. So almost twice the performance on the M4 Pro SSD. Now, moving forward, I actually want to benchmark everything at 1080p to keep things simple and straightforward. So I needed a 1080p 120 hertz monitor, and MSI was kind enough to send over their Pro MP 251E2 monitor. Now, this is an IPS 1080p 120 hertz monitor with four millisecond response time. That's around $100, and that's pretty competitively priced considering the fact that this is also extremely lightweight, only six pounds for the monitor itself. So you can easily move it from room to room with no problem. This is going to be a great help for us in the future. This video is not sponsored by MSI, but we want to thank them so much for supplying this unit for our testing. 
Now come back to the topic of Mac gaming. Now we have three ways to do so. One is using native Mac games, either bought through the App Store or through the Steam OS X game library. Fairly limited even to this day, but it's getting better as we speak. But the other option is using the new translation tools with crossover that will take DirectX 11 and 12 games that run on the Windows Steam library and directly translate them into Metal 3 so you can actually run them natively on OS X. This works with a lot of games that I've tried, but there are several games that don't work due to things like anti-cheat or they just don't translate uh, nicely and accordingly. And with some tweaks, you can probably improve it and compatibility is getting better and better as we go forward. But there's still a lot of games that won't work uh, straight off the bat. Now, the other third option that will make all your games work is obviously running some sort of virtual machines with Parallel, running Windows 11 within that virtual machine in OS X, and playing all your games that way. The downside is going to be performance. Obviously, you're going to be limited in terms of how much performance allocation you can put to your CPU and GPU. Now, with these powerful uh, machines, especially the M4 Pro chip, you can definitely allocate more resources, but the performance is not going to be nearly as good as what you would expect to find on a native Mac game and even a game that's being translated using crossover. So, for example, even on the base M4 chip, I took one game, which is uh, Red Out, an anti-gravity racing game, very easy to run. And uh, using uh, Parallels in Windows 11, I got an average frame rate about 33 FPS, 1080p with high detail settings. The same exact game running crossover ran at 85 to 90 frames per second, same exact detail settings and at 1080p. So uh, we're getting almost three times the performance. And if this game was native to Mac OS X, we could expect even better performance, but not by a huge margin. I found that crossover works really quite well, even on the base M4 chip. But now let's finally get into our benchmark results. We're gonna be taking a look at several games that are running on Mac OS X natively, as well as uh, many of my favorite Steam games running on crossover crossover to see what the performance differences are between the standard M4 and M4 Pro chip. Okay, so the first game I tried out was Metro Exodus. This is available both on the App Store and on Steam. And with high detail settings, 1080p resolution, you're looking at 60 to 75 FPS on the M4. You could see the FPS counter on the top right hand corner uh, using the metal HUD. On the M4 Pro, we're getting about 100 to 170 FPS, so a nice bump up depending upon the environment, but both chips do a great job of running this game above 60 FPS. Next was Rise of the Tomb Raider, and using its built-in benchmark at 1080p high detail settings, we're getting about 71.8 average frames per second on the benchmark on the M4. On the M4 Pro, it goes up to 133 average frames per second. So almost twice the performance, very impressive to see. On Everspace 2, which is typically a harder game to run, it doesn't run that high in terms of FPS, we're getting about 35 to 40 frames per second at 1080p high detail settings on the M4, versus about 40 to 55 FPS on the M4 Pro. This game doesn't run that high in terms of frame rate, but uh, you could see that we do have a minor bump on the M4 Pro, but not by a significant margin. Counter-Strike 2, running natively in Mac OS X, on the dusk map, you're looking at about 90 to 120 frames per second on the M4 medium detail settings. And on the M4 Pro, you're looking at about 120 to 160 frames per second. So Counter-Strike definitely runs great on the M4 chip. In both circumstances, you're getting above 90 to 100 frames per second most of the time. Now our last native Mac OS X game is actually a proper racing game, Dirt 4. It's a couple of years old, but still fairly graphically demanding, especially if you crank up all the detail settings to ultra. And in that circumstance, our frame rate ranges between 57 to 75 frames per second on the M4 within this stage. And the M4 Pro gets about 90 to 120 frames per second. Now next, using Crossover 24, which is our translation tool for translating DX11 and 12 games to Metal, we're going to run some of my favorite Steam games found on the Windows platform, starting with the big one, Cyberpunk 2077, 1080p medium detail preset, ray tracing off, and DLSS off as well. We're getting about 30 to 40 frames per second on the M4 at the beginning of the game. 
That's really not that great, but playable to some extent. Now, the M4 Pro chip hovers around 50 frames per second in the exact same scenario, which is certainly a lot more playable, but uh, I do have to mention that Cyberpunk will be coming natively to the Mac in 2025, so it'll be fun to see how this game actually runs once it's fully natively supported. But in the meantime, you can still play it on the M4 using Crossover. Now. The next few games are going to be some of my favorite kind of arcade style games. They're not hard to run, but I just want to see if we can play them using crossover. And the first game is an indie game called The Takeover. It's a classic beat em up style. And I'm sure emulating old retro style games like this is definitely going to be a feasible option on the M4. This of course runs natively in Windows, but it's having no issues in the metal translation, running at pretty much the maximum refresh rate of our monitor at 120 frames per second. This game is mostly 2D, but it has some 3D assets and a lot of the characters do cool Street Fighter moves and the whole style is very Streets of Rage so it's one of my favorite beat em up games in the last couple of years. Next let's actually take a look at a Street Fighter game, one of my favorites Street Fighter 4 for the PC and this we can pretty much max out all the settings that we're getting uh, what the game is limited to which is 60 frames per second both on the M4 and M4 Pro. Runs flawlessly with no hiccups or any uh, quirks at all and it's pretty awesome uh, to experience a modern-ish Street Fighter game on the Mac for the first time. Now next I want to talk about my favorite arcade style racing game on the PC which is Need for Speed Hot Pursuit Remastered. Uh, this game at maxed out setting runs on the M4 at around the mid 50 frames per second, 55 to like uh, low 50s. Very playable and uh, this game is limited to 60 frames per second so you can definitely max out all the detail settings, have a great experience on the standard M4 chip and on the M4 Pro chip, it's gonna max out uh, the frame cap at 60 frames per second pretty much the entire way through. So this game, if you've never played before, gives you an awesome sensation of speed and it brings out kind of the best things about burnout and need for speed all in one. And I think it's one of the best need for speed games ever made. Sticking in the theme of racing games, we're gonna take a look at our anti-gravity racer that we mentioned earlier in the video, Red Out. This runs at 90 to 80 frames per second on the M4 with high detail settings. And on the M4 Pro, you're looking about 100 to 150 frames per second depending upon where you are on the track but both games run this game flawlessly at a very silky smooth frame rate now, the last two games are going to be first person one is ghost runner at 1080p high detail setting we're getting about 70 to 80 frames per second on the m4 runs great minimum frame rate is always above 60 and uh, very little stuttering issues i encountered and on the m4 pro it gets even better at 100 to 120 frames per second depending upon where you are and this thing runs silky smooth on both platforms but especially very smooth on the m4 pro and uh, really highlights the power of the translation tools that cross Surfer has as well as uh, the real capabilities on the m4 gpu Last but not least, probably the greatest modern classic game ever, Portal 2, runs at 70 to 90 frames per second. Now, this does have uh, some lower frame rate hiccups here and there, especially when you go through portals and go encounter new environments, down to about 20 frames at times. Uh, but when you load up a specific uh, map and arena, it definitely smooths out quite a bit on the M4. And on the M4 Pro, you're getting super crazy frame rates uh, at highs up to 200 and uh, really hovers around 100 frames per second and you still have some of those lows that go uh, below like 50 frames just when you're transitioning between different portals but generally speaking uh, portal 2 runs great on the m4 and it's really awesome to play on the mac but really on that guys that's right i definitely have to know what you guys think of mac gaming in general do you think it's something viable that's actually going to compete against windows gaming or even uh, console gaming i definitely don't think it's going to go that far but it's nice to know that you can actually do so you can play many of your favorite games on the Mac and uh, thanks to the fact that these things are so reasonably priced especially the base model for a very powerful 
quite capable PC for anything that you're going to do and you're getting it for under $600, the M4 standard Mac Mini is definitely the thing to get. Now, is it worth paying more than double for the M4 Pro version of the Mac Mini? Well, maybe. It depends on what you're going to do. If you need uh, that extra gaming performance, obviously there is some merit to that, but more likely uh, for higher resolution video editing and more memory bandwidth and things like that, there's definitely a very good use case for the M4 Pro Mac Mini, especially if you want a very powerful and compact PC with a lots of ports and connectivity options to be quite expandable and even future-proof to some extent. I'd definitely love to know if you guys are interested in getting the new Mac Mini. Which one would you get? Would you go for the standard model or would you get something a little bit uh, upper end uh, depending upon what you're going to obviously do? But love to know what you guys think of the video down below in the comments section. Give us a thumbs up if you haven't done so already. Please make sure to like and subscribe. We're going to actually have a comparison between uh, the M4 Pro MacBook Pro and uh, my MacBook Air powered by the M3 chip. So definitely stay tuned for the channel for that video and we'll see you real soon in the next one. Take care.